Yesterday I was down at the uh, women's rally or something, march downtown yesterday. It was a mess. As Joel was saying, it was a mess. Uh, there were lots of women there, young children. And the one thing that I noticed is that millennials are kind of halfway there. They're not all the way corrupt, but the generation after them, corrupt. No values at all. I was asking my producer this morning, what's the difference between no morals or amoral? And I believe they are amoral now. They have none. They don't even know that values exist because they've been so brainwashed, so dumbed down, so destroyed, even by their own parents. Parents are living together, uh, having sex before marriage. The men are weak. The women are angry. And then they send them off to school, and the school destroy them. And with so many kids down there thinking that wrong is right. And we got to, we, it's our job to change that. It really is. And especially men, but men and women of God have to change that. Those who have changed. We cannot live that way anymore. We're going to lose this country. We're going to lose generation and generation of souls if we don't start standing up. And so my, oh, so let me tell you this, and then my question is, how do you stand, all right? Because a lot of people are afraid to stand up. They're afraid to speak up. And as a result, we're losing. So I was down there doing the man on the street thing, and I was asking all these different questions, and uh, it was radical. They were getting mad, they were yelling, and there was a bunch of nuns down there. They were dressed in the whole nun outfit thing. Were they real, James? Oh, you were there. Oh, I can't ask Travis, you say something bad. Uh, let me ask, who was there? Oh, were they real? Where's the mic? Uh, wake up. Were they real? I don't know if they were real because they were swearing a lot, but... The nuns were swearing. So, go ahead. But they, it didn't seem like a costume. It seemed like it was a group of nuns that were like pro-abortion, pro-LGBT, pro-open borders type. Like, it was like a leftist nun group. Oh, were they that, real? That, but, I, think, I think they were actual nuns. They didn't look like a costume. Oh, no, it did not. And they had on the nun stuff, the whole outfit, right? And they had signs that says, yeah, patriotry. And then they called the president the a-hole, the nuns. And so I'm like, let me talk to the nuns, right? And I go with my mic to talk to the nuns. They're like, F you. They were telling me that. I'm like, what kind of nun are you? <laughs> I'm like, are you guys real? And they just start cursing me out. And they try to get away from me. They start running. And I had never seen nuns do that. Isn't that amazing? No wonder if uh, Catholic kids have been traumatized. The nuns are me. They go, nuns gone wild. They were, I can't even say because we're in church, I can't say what they really said. But every nasty word you can possibly think of. They were all ladies and they were just mad. They hate men too. How many morals? They have none. A more. It's, no. They are liberal nuns or something. They, they were Maybe they were acting. Yeah. Maybe they were lesbian. <laughs> and so I go over, and I would call all kind of names. I was called nigger, all kind of names, right? So I go over, and I'm interviewing these, what look like lesbians. And uh, so the one lesbian got mad, if she is a lesbian. She looked like a lesbian. We like lesbians, all right? Not that I'm against them, but they need to overcome and she got mad, and these people gather around, don't answer him, don't respond to him. I noticed that these people cannot handle real questions. Yeah. They can't handle that. They get mad. You just ask them no question that has no values at all, they're okay with that. But when you ask them real serious questions, they get mad. And so I'm over there talking to this one, everybody gathered, and this one got mad, and she, she was drinking like what seemed to be a 7-Up or Sprite or something. And she threw it on me. She took a can and pulled it out on me, then she kicked me. All the black came out of me. 
<laughs> All the little black came about me. And then, uh, then her, I assume, lesbian lover, whatever you call her, she picked up the can from the ground. She threw some more on me. And so I picked it up and threw it on her and dashed it on her. And then she came and just fighting me. She was like attacking. All the black came out of me. And so um, it was interesting. And then Travis went down there, the uh, producer, one of the producers of the Father State, and he made up this shirt that says, I'm proud to be white. <laughs> white power and all that stuff. <laughs> and so at the very end, when the, the thing was over, the crowd was coming down so they all could see him. They, they block off the road with these big road blocking things. And he stood up on one, and he took his shirt off so they could see the shirt that says, I'm proud to be white. And he was up there yelling, I'm white. I'm proud to be white. I'm white and I'm proud. White power. White power. And they gathered around him like uh, mad dogs. It was like amazing. They were just gathered around him and yelling at him. And then there were um, a black, big, black guy tried to take him off that thing and beat him. And it was a mess. And they had women of Mexicans, blacks, and all kind of things gathered around him, yelling at him. And, and so I went over and I was like, what's wrong with being white? Why are, you, why are you upset that this man is saying that he is white? And then they got mad at me. You could say you're any color but white. You could say you're black, brown, whatever color, but you can't be white. And they were mad because he was yelling, I'm white and I'm proud. And he had on this little shirt that said it. It was amazing to see that. And so why have, why is it bad to say I'm white if you're white? It's not. Hold on one minute. So what? It's not unless you're a communist. Are you afraid to say I'm white? Absolutely not. Okay. Because I didn't know you get that attack for saying I'm white. They hate that. What do you say with the beard? Why is it bad to say I'm white? I mean, just in the last few years, it seems like things have really gotten crazy. Like, I just got back to school. I was in the Army down in Tennessee, so I wasn't exposed to that type of thing. Yes. But, um, yeah, just because I was at, in, in college seven years, and I dropped out and failed, and um, it didn't seem that bad. Right. But now when I walk around campus, like, I can feel, like, people looking at me, like, with hatred. And Why people hate it? Like on campus, it's like super bad. There's just people running around like, make with ma saying made up words like, uh, "people of color," you know, and like just saying it, like coming up with new words every week and like. I use colored. <laughs> that's that's a. I think that's a little outdated, but. <laughs> so. I mean. <laughs> the whole question is. My question today is, how do we overcome this? How do you overcome the fear of speaking up or, or, or losing your job or something happening? Because Representative uh, Steve, Steve King stood up for the country, and they took him off all of his platforms, all the committees and things, and now he, can't, he has no power at all now. How can we stop this? This has to be stopped. A war? <laughs> What type of war? What type, right here. What type of war? The terrible kind. Like what? When debate ceases, there's no other option. Do you mean like a physical war? Like a defensive war at this point. The one thing I did notice yesterday at this rally, the people on the, the children of the left, the left, the media, the Democrats, and the right old Republicans and all them, they are very violent people. Everything they accuse us of is what they are. Because when they attacked me yesterday, it, they didn't expect any retaliation for that. They expected none, but I surprised them. <laughs> South Africa is the blueprint. Yeah, that's right. It's coming. Amazing. So how do you over, so you're saying a physical war, right? Are you saying that? I don't think anybody is seeking it, but it looks like it's going to come whether we are or not. 
So if we stood up as men and women of God, are you saying we need to stand up in a physical way? Last resort, of course. Uh, is there another way to stand? I, I, I would love to believe that, Jesse. And what's the other way? Through, through debate and through unity and through fighting that narrative. Are you afraid to have a real debate with them? When they dump soda cans on you and kick you and that leads to the next step and the next step and the next step, who knows? Are you afraid to have a real debate with them? I'm not. Would you, would you be able to say homosexuality is wrong, abortion is wrong? Yes, I own a business. I can't get fired for, the, for what I say. I can't be held accountable or ostracized. If you could get fired, would you be afraid to speak up about those things? I'd be afraid to lose my livelihood, but I'm the kind of person that would die of hunger before I'd go over my principle. Okay. The young lady behind you, are you f how can we overcome this? Because they are right here. They are getting the best of us. I mean, it looks like we need a war. I think men need to, conservative men need to take the power from evil females. How? How, how I don't know. It's up to you, you know guys. Me? I mean, I'm a woman, but that's what I'm seeing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She says, it's up to you guys. I'm a woman. <laughs> Maybe you just they need right. to, I mean, all conservative guys in leadership of any kind, you just gang together Take the voting rights from females first, because I think that's where it's all stemming from. Oh, you love that, Mr. Atheist. He going. <laughs> you know, and then make better decisions. Amazing. I'm glad I asked this question. Uh, Michael, at the end over here. Yes, Michael. How do we get back the power or control? Uh, I think with the gentleman with the beard was saying how you're experiencing this on college campus, I think we just need to go back to segregation. So, Ooh. you know, whites only colleges or maybe American patriot colleges or conservative, but it's kind of like it's, that's where it's leading to naturally without this Are kind of- Are you white? Uh, no. What's your race? I'm Korean. Ooh. But I'd still try to, I'd try you to- try to add white. my way into the whites only. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> or, I mean, merit, merit, merit based. Y'all yeah, come on in. Oh, where can they sit? Joel, I mean, uh, Esteban did one of those DNA testing. Oh, yeah. And he found out that he was 53% white. Oh. And he's like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, were you 9% black? 8% black. Eight percent black, and I said that's where that cheapness <laughs> and laziness come from, because <laughs> he's real cheap. That's the black part. Eight <laughs> percent. Well, he was so happy. He was like, "Yes, I'm eight, How much white were you? Uh, fifty-three percent white. Fifty-three percent white. Yeah, and he was so happy. Native American and eight percent uh, black. Amazing. So. <laughs> So, Michael, you think we need to segregate ourselves, right? I think that's what it's kind of leading towards, just segregation, because they obviously, they, meaning the liberals, don't want white people on campus. Unless white they people think the are the most hate. It is South Africa happening, I'm telling you. And if you let them take over the government, it's over for the white people. It really, they're going to take all your stuff. Yep. They're going to kill you. They're not going to feel anything about it, and they won't get arrested. Because the government is on their side. It's going to happen unless something else happens. And you're right. South Africa is a perfect example of what's going to happen. I used to say that about, and still do that, if the rest of the world want to see what happened when men become weak, look at the black people. Black people became weak because the men became weak. It wasn't like that prior to the civil rights movement. But they didn't listen. And now the men are weak. Uh, all right, right here. Anything else, Michael? Segregate and that's all? Uh, segregation or, I mean, I guess it, if that doesn't work and people kind of still revolt and don't like that idea, then I think it's going to end up in some sort of a civil war. Amazing. Yes, sir, Mark. I think it's really no big deal. I mean, um, 
What were you doing yesterday when I was being attacked, assaulted? I was making sure you didn't like kick her to the ground and like get uh, in trouble. Uh, okay, that's but, my bodyguard. Uh, <laughs> in general, you know, like you said, there like no one held back a single word. No. Like, what every any type of like thought of rage, it came right out. Right out of you them. know what I mean? Like everyone was screaming everything minus I'm about to effing kill you. You know what I mean? Like everything besides that. It was and I, dark. And I was like really kind of proud for a moment because it was like when people get like this, you know, we hit like a nine, you could say yesterday, right? When people hit like a two and a half, people start getting stabbed in other countries. You know, when people hit a four, people, places are getting bombed. You know, there's drive-by shootings. There's like serious violence. There's kidnappings. There's retaliation kidnappings. Yeah. There's fires. There's all kinds of horrible things that happen. And in the United States, people are Palestinian, they're Israeli, they're conservative, they're liberal, they hate you, they hate you. But no one really does anything. You know what I mean? Like, it's a real, it's really a testament to, to our free society. We don't need segregation. We don't need a war. Nobody is shooting each other. And this is a good thing, you know? It, it, it's a but good they're going to be shooting next. I mean, I'm After not worried. I'm not worried the guns about are coming. That. They're going to be yeah. shooting. If they shoot, I'll shoot back. You know what I mean? Oh. But I, I don't need to worry about That's it. That's not my bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, it, like, uh, you know, James there had a show a today. There is a perfect solution to this. There's a perfect solution to this. That's what I'm trying to get at. What's the solution to this? Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I think just like what we have here right now is so beautiful, positive, and cathartic that I'm almost wondering before it resorts to anything, you know, past yeah. or going past anything like physical, but um, maybe to have like discussions with friends and family. I mean, I know that it's gone to that point where, you know, we have had to cut off a lot of people or people have cut us off. But um, just like with my experience at home, you know, making, getting people in my family to realize that there is anti-whiteness, that there is um, sentiments that are anti-patriotic and just getting people to admit those things so that, you know, when you see moderate liberals or, or centrists or, you know, people who don't typically get involved, that when they see it and that they're aware of it because somebody's discussed these things, that they can, you know, step up because, you know, that's something that more or less happened to me. You know, I couldn't have cared less before. And then when I saw how irrational people were and, um, you know, like evil and, and spiteful, yeah. that I've, I've had to make my stands, you, you know, you. and then that's kind of what brought me here. So I think that, you know, this could, um, you know, what we have here, and what we develop within ourselves, it, it can be taken and applied with our friends, you know, maybe not coworkers, but family and, you know, people we care about. Yeah. What do you say? And then over here, Travis. Go to, did you have your hand, Travis? Oh, yeah, I, I know uh, good. Oh, okay. Um, the one thing I always told some of my homeboys is that when good people don't say anything, evil always win. Yes. When people decide to compromise their values, yeah. evil still wins. Um, That's right. And so when I went to a historical black college and in North Carolina, and when I was there, there was a riot uh, for that Keith Scott uh, case, and they rioted it, you know, right next to my school. Yes. Uh, a lot of the kids, one kid, uh, at that time I was dating this white girl, and my homeboy, he was like- You were dating a white girl? At, at, at that time. Amazing. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, at that time when I was dating a white girl, uh, my homeboy was like, "Yo, my brother, you, you good?" And I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "I was like, yeah." He's like, "Hey man, you know, I, I know who you are, Reggie, but you got crackatosis." I was like, "Crackatosis?" Yeah, crackatosis. Yeah, I was just like, and, you know, and then you know, but you know, this is, <laughs> but you know, this is like, you know, not the first time I heard outrageous statements like that, right. and I was always the one that said. You know, y'all can't keep blaming white people for everything. And, you know, they always looked at me like I'm a coon, Uncle Tom, and all that stuff. Um, but over time, some people, they start to understand. They were like, oh, okay, I get it. But then some people, it's, yeah, you know, right. they get socked in the face. But you got to speak up anyway. Yeah. And, you know, and sometimes it takes 
for a bully to get, you know, bully back yeah. for them to, you know, That's understand. a good point, man. So. Absolutely. When they were calling me nigger and all that, one guy was like, you a nigger. I said, oh, yeah, that's true. I said, but I'm a coon, an Uncle Tom, I'm an Oreo, and a sellout, too. And he got mad about that. <laughs> he got mad because I'm agreeing with him. <laughs> uh, and, and then when they were calling me coon, I'm like, this is a racist. He a racist. I started yelling out really loud. She is a racist. And they're scared of that word, but they try to use it on, to other whites on the conservative side. And when you call them that, they, they don't know what to do. They're like, uh-uh, uh-uh. But you got to use their own medicine on them. You got to use it on them. Otherwise, you're going to lose. But I have the perfect solution. Yes, Travis. I was, I was really. Uh, this is the one that was shot at. I'm white and proud. <laughs> I am white and proud, and uh, I noticed while we were down there, a lot of the cops were, uh, you know, you can't name names or anything, but a lot of them are on our side, like yeah. all of them, they love us, because we're respectful, and we tell them that, hey, thanks for, you know, being here and stuff and protecting us, but I just, that's the only weapon we have is the police, so I just say file charges. And we got we got to start filing charges That's and all the these one crazy thing people. To do for sure. Yeah, and then you got to hit yeah. them where it hurts, which is in their wallets. That's what I say. Okay, the young man right next to you. He had his hand. Um, well, I, the only class I have passed in college, pretty much before I dropped out, was philosophy, and <laughs> they taught us about Socrates and how the Socratic method, and that's what. I've never seen, when I found you, I've never seen anyone that implements that as well as you, the Socratic method, whereas you just constantly ask questions, like on your Fallen State show or on yeah. the street, you're just constantly hitting them with the questions, and then they just fall, they just talk themselves off a cliff, and um, pretty much, yeah, like I try to emulate that, questions. that you're way right. you can just be like, I'm just the guy asking questions, when, like that's what yeah. I try to do on, on campus, is just copy how, how you do it and you know just right try on, to man. this is your first time here right yes sir oh, okay. okay i flew down here from seattle yesterday oh right on welcome we, we skyped three months ago oh okay well welcome thank you uh, appreciate that do you want to respond to that what's the best way to deal with what's happening right now i think what happens is that uh we have lost the the men and the men we have we have to hit them back in the mouth and uh, in the mouth, yeah. I mean, it's like with your fist, yeah. You got to hit them right back. With, oh, no, with what there's they're a coming. better way than that. Um, but the one thing I do want to say to the men if somebody hit you, you have the right to hit back. I'm telling you, you, you shouldn't start a fight unless you're protecting yourself. But if it's a man or a woman hit, hit you first, assault you, don't let them hit you. You fight back. That's crazy. Because you have to protect yourself. Otherwise, you get killed. And don't let them say, oh, it's a woman. Didn't she know she was a woman before she hit me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you got to stand up. That's one thing that you have to do. Protect yourself. Yes, yeah, Cheryl. That's a good point about the women because... I've been noticing videos where the women are like pushing the men around and hollering at them. And this one girl hit this guy and he just clocked her. I mean, it was like, I mean, if I was a woman, you know, they better be careful because, I mean, anytime you see that, men just have so much strength. And they try to say, well, we're, we're not the different, we're equality. And, they, and in the comments, it's like, well, you got your equality. That's right. And they have, I'll show you equality. I'll show you equality. <laughs> well, there was one where these girls, these black girls were like around this family. And they were just like really on this man. And she like, she kind of like, he pushed her off. And then she came up with her dukes and he clocked her and she yeah. went Men down. Men have like, allowed the children of the lie to convince them, let a woman beat the hell out of you and don't you do anything. How do you let somebody convince you of that? I think everybody on pot. <laughs> we all have a right to protect ourselves. We have the right to freedom of speech. Can't nobody take that away. You have to give that up. How many men have been beat up by women or by a woman? <laughs> they scared to raise their hand. <laughs> I know some. I'm looking at some men who have been beat up by women. <laughs> and they won't raise their hand. All right, you don't have to tell them. You've been beat up by a woman? They've tried. They, Many they, times. They smack you around? <laughs> Many times they tried, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah? And did you defend yourself? Definitely. Oh, good. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm, the thing about me, I'm willing to go to jail. Definitely. I don't care about no jail house. I ain't going to let nobody hit me and not defend myself. But that's good, man. Uh, and the rest won't tell us. But I know who you are. <laughs> uh, so, anybody else want to add to the perfect way to do it? Oh, okay. Let me get three other people that I have to respond because of time. Right there. Right here, yeah. Let's go. What's the best way to deal with this? Um, well, I, I actually had a question. Um, oh, okay. I, when, when that woman did that to you, and you said all the black came out of you, um, <laughs> does that mean that you got angry? No. You did not get angry The one at thing all. I want you to know, all the blacks can come out of you without being angry. That's the beauty of being born again. It doesn't make you weak. So you responding like that to her and basically giving it back to her, it was just you being present and just, here you go, have That's it back. Right. And, but, but so what was going on in, inside of you when you said all the black was coming out of me? Like what emotions well, when I said were all the black, I was just joking right now. No, I know. But yeah. I'm just saying what emotions were going inside of you? Oh, that's a good question. Zero. <laughs> okay. None. God is not an emotional God, and he doesn't want his children to be emotional. That's why he's done something else to help you, and I'll tell you in a minute. But emotions are from the world. You've been set up to be emotional. Mm -hmm. That's why emotional people are losing. Yeah. All right? That's a good question, though. Okay. But no, I didn't feel anything. Okay. And the young man behind. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I think um, the, the way things are today didn't happen yesterday. It didn't get this way. Because right. Something happened yesterday. It, it was started a long time ago. That's right. I remember when I was, I'm 47, when I was in elementary school, they showed Roots on TV. And the next day, everything was different. Yes. And really, we could, even little kids, you could feel it. There was nothing wrong before that happened. Yeah, they, those they, are they, angry movies. Yeah, yeah, That's it's bad, bad to show that. Yeah. And then, um, um, so there, there's an enemy stirring this up. It's hard to pinpoint who it is. People I know point exactly fingers who it is. Yeah, okay, I believe, I don't know if it's even human, hum, it's not human. It was an enemy, yeah. So, and I don't, I think that uh, to say it's anti-white or anti-man, there's that, but that's a facade also. It's very deceptive. It's really anti-Christian. This is the attack is against that's happened, God. That's happening, but it's really, really, really anti-man and anti-white. It, it, it is, but they're going to... Because men represent God. I know. And evil doesn't but, but, want right. men to represent God. But you're not white. You don't look white to me. They didn't like you but either. I act like I'm white. <laughs> But they, didn't, standing the, up. but they didn't like you at the Women's March either. Right. They didn't like you because yeah. of what you stand for. Right. This is the, the root of it is they don't like God. Right. They don't like Christians. That's right. And, and, and I don't really think, he said something that got me thinking, I thought this before, I don't think it often. There really isn't a way, I don't, maybe I'd like to hear what you have to say. I don't think there's a solution without a war. I'm not going to kill anybody. But I think one good solution I heard was, um, because... To, for someone to come and see the light and change from that side to here is like one in a hundred or one in a thousand for them to repent and yeah. see the light and come to this side. The yeah. majority is going to be violent and evil soon and more. But on the opposite side, we don't need but one. God doesn't uh -huh. need a whole bunch of people. He doesn't need but one. But if they start shooting and all this stuff South Africa. I'm sorry? I, 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 yeah, I hear you. I hear one. But I, I think one thing I heard, um, if uh, you have a divorce... And this is in a dream world. This is going to happen. But if we simply split the country left and right, and wh blacks, whites, Koreans on the one side, blacks, whites, Koreans, Hispanics, wh both sides, why do we have to live together? Let them have their crazy stuff, and they hate us. <laughs> they we don't. Have, and let them. Uh, there's enough land. I don't know. I know. It, it, I haven't worked it all out. It's never going to happen. <laughs> 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 they want it all. They want blood. They want blood. They want, all. They want the whole world. I agree with them. But, but listen, that would be one they, way to fix it. But if we did split up like that, anyone who has anger, we'll turn on each other. Let him self so like, Let you him have all the Hispanics on this land, yeah. all the whites on this land, all the blacks and all this. That's their but problem. But we'll start fighting each other. We, we, because our land spirit has to fight with somebody. Well, on our land, it'll be good. Let you them, know, y'all still be fighting too. The white people fight too. No, nope, I'm saying the the people who are moral and love God, oh. and and not just the white. I'm just not saying oh, the whites. The I'm, not, I'm saying everybody yeah. who who want the left and the right, the yeah. right and the left. The you know that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Not by racial lines, by ideology. Let the left have their side of the country, and we have our side, and they're going to self-destruct. We, we won't. We 
So we should move. <laughs> well, we gotta have a wall, a strike strong a we wall move between out of California, the, in man. the middle of the country, not on the border, <laughs> at the and the Mexican border. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. I gotta move a little faster here. Did you have your hand, Joel? Oh, okay. Oh, you did. Okay. Uh, I believe one thing is conservatives need to have more babies. Uh, we need to have diligent. Why do we need to have babies? There is exactly. We have a uh, diligent parents. You about a pregnant? Not yet. No. <laughs> Get in there. Uh, we need to have uh, diligent parents, just the way yeah. uh, Vladimir was, making sure that, catching, making sure that your kids don't get programmed into radicalism at a very young age. That conversation should not be a conversation with children that That's age. Right. Like, that conversation should be in there. Are and, you afraid to speak up against them when you're with them? Oh, no. You yep. tell I the have, truth? I have a little Trump doll at my desk, and no one oh, will do? touch me because I'm a Hispanic female, so it's great. Like, yeah. <laughs> I fight fire with fire, so no. No, I'm, I'm very... Open in, in what I speak. When they were attacking me yesterday, these two black guys, big black guys, came over, and they had on Trump hat, "Make America Great Again," and they started yelling at them, "Take your hat off." I'm like, "You can't tell black people what to do. Isn't that wrong?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, "We're black. How are you gonna tell us what to do?" Exactly. It. I thought we learned not to tell black people no. <laughs> they didn't like that at all. But you're right. We we got to have strong families. That and build and men those, gotta be men. Build, build those communities just the way you were talking earlier. We really need to expand and making uh, sure that we build our own community uh, with, within our own cultures. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Way in the back there, yeah. This is so interesting. Jay, do you have any questions online? Oh, Michael has it. Oh, I see. Okay. So I was going to say, I mean, I don't know if this is going to solve anything, but just like liberals come together and they actually organize themselves and do all these march marches, maybe we can do that too. I mean, I feel like outside of here, um, I mean, do we really organize ourselves and like make our thoughts known? That's a good point. And the media won't show it, though. That's right. yeah. But we before still should do it. Watch for our lives was like the day before the women's march. Right. I didn't even know it. Yeah. Until yeah. I thought. Let's take you off news match, right? Yes, but we need to do it though. Yeah, we need to we need to stick together. One thing, look at Steve, uh, Representative Steve King going through what he's going. There's no protest about it. Everybody just accepting it. Nobody shows support for this man, and this man wasn't wrong. But no, nobody did nothing. And also, I feel guilty because last night I had an encounter with a situation where maybe I could have stepped up, but. Um, it was, I work in a hospital and um, we had a African-American patient, patient's mother, and she was breaking the rules with visitations and um, no one can tell her no. And she was not, she, she used the race card. She was saying, oh, is it, beca now, is it because my children are here and all of wow. that. And we called. Why didn't you speak up? Um, well, the, the charge nurse was uh, taking care of the situation as best as she could, and then she, we called the, the supervisor and everything, and the supervisor was white, so she felt, you know, immediately when she used the race card, she felt, I guess, threatened, and the lady wouldn't stop yelling, and I didn't step up, maybe because I just didn't think it was going there. If I would have stepped up, I would have definitely, like, not been angry and told her that the policy is a Why policy. Why did you step up? Because a lot of people were already on it, and I thought they would handle it, and they didn't. And so, why didn't you step up? <laughs> the real reason. Because I knew that at the end of the day, they were going to give her what she wanted. No, that's not why you speak up. Because I mean, no, the super, the the house, the hospital supervisor a caved hospice? in. The hospital supervisor oh, caved in. So uh, at that point, you, and so you were afraid to speak up. I wasn't. No. Oh. I was, I was, it was just funny to see how everything was oh, okay. happening. But, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Most, I, I, most I people are afraid of speaking up because I'm losing something. They think they're going to lose something. No. Why don't you speak up? Is this your first time here? Uh, this, oh, yeah. What's your name? Uh, Mike. Hey, Mike. Michael or Mike? It's actually Mikey. Mikey. Yeah. Hey, Mikey. How did you find us? Uh, through YouTube. Oh, okay. And uh, suggestions. Are you afraid to speak up? Uh, no, I don't think I am, but I don't think I've uh, been confronted. By anybody or anything? <laughs> no. You've never been confronted by, how about your mother? You afraid to speak up to your mother? No, not at all. 
Uh, so you, how old are you? I am 27. So you've been in the world 27 years, have never been, had to speak up about anything? Well, I just can't think of anything off the top. Oh, okay. So you're a millennial, right? I don't identify myself with the, the <laughs> millennial movement. I do. <laughs> What's wrong with millennials today? Uh, where do I begin? Um, <laughs> no, just uh, the mere fact that they think uh, they're entitled to everything. Yes. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, that's for sure. Are you like that too? No, uh, oh. I believe you have to work for what you what you want. Yeah. You have any questions for me? Uh, no. Okay. Yes, Frankie. And then I have to answer this. Oh, Mike, you have some on that. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that we are in a war. This is absolute war for this this country, and they're fighting. And even if we don't do anything, go in our corner, they're going to come over there and take that yeah. too because they're not happy with so what, what they have. So what should we do to overcome this? Well, right now, you can, we can still fight with, uh, if you confront them, if you, uh, to stop them, you, you, uh, you have to, you know, out, out argue them. You have to just stand there and, and take the brunt of it. And that's, that's fighting enough. Um, that's a better, that's true too, but a much better way. And I'm gonna tell you, one minute. Uh, Oh, right behind you there, Frankie. Okay. Kind of what he said. You, you, you don't win. I mean, if it comes to blows, it comes to blows, but, like, it'll be revealed to you when it's time to do that. But in the meantime, you need to call it out. You need to shame the devil. You need to Are have a family. Are you afraid to speak up out in the world to things? Not since meeting you. Uh, again, I've gotten into a few things, and yeah. but the difference is, like you said, it, you can raise your voice. You can you're be kidding. louder, but you're not angry about it, and you actually see them kind of huff and puff, and they crumble, yeah. and they got nothing. They have no answers. They got no ammunition, and what happens is, Enough people, even just one, will notice that that person is, is the one who's the problem. Yes. They, they, they're too scared to say anything, but then you're the one speaking up, and then you might give that one person courage to speak up. Yes. And they'll remember that moment. Because it happened right. a few times where they, they've calmed down and said you made a point. There were uh, several young girls out there who were telling me, I was talking to interviewing them, they were like, I know who you are. You're the man that's talking about the sluts. <laughs> <laughs> they were like young teenagers. I'm like... Yeah, that's right. I said, are you, a, I asked, are you a slut? <laughs> and about four or five of them, so I went around, right? And they all said, yes. And I said, woo, sluts! <laughs> and then they said, well, so what? Men are sluts, too. I said, no, my man can't be a slut. Well, what are men? I said, men are slut makers. <laughs> and they didn't like that at all, because they want everything to be equal. I was like, no, me and a slut make a man can't be a slut. And they had a fit about that. And they were young teenagers. Then there was a 15-year-old black girl out there carrying on. I mean, just, so I finally asked, how old are you? I'm 15. I said, go sit down. You don't know what you're talking about. You have no idea what you're talking about. Yes, I do. I'm 15. She was talking about how bad the white people are. They hate her because she's black. I was like, you have no idea what you're talking about. Go sit down. She's like, my parents are here. I said, go bring your parents. She never did bring her parents. But she was going on and on about this race thing, so messed up in the head at 15 years old in, in today's America. Joel, you had the last word. Yes, sir. And then I, I got to put my in because I want, want. Is that about this, Michael? Um, no, it's just uh, separate uh, comments. Okay, let me do that then. Let me close this one out. Just subject it out. Well, Frankie made a point how he was saying that you out argue. You know the other the other side or whatever the case is, but uh, but I don't. But you can't out argue to me. You can't out argue a blind person though. I feel like after a while you just you're spinning your wheels and you ain't getting anywhere. So if it like yeah. he's sitting in front, I don't remember. I don't know his name, but he said um, it may come to violence, but it, it may come to violence because you you speak up and then they don't listen, but you continue to speak up and you continue to push it. Thinking you're gonna win, they're just gonna get more more angry. I hope it doesn't come to violence, because that's what they want. They want us to fight each other, and they're gonna put us in jail. They really are. They want they'll pass more laws. They'll put us in jail. We could solve it without violence. And I'm gonna tell you one last minute. A new guy. This is your first time here, sir. Okay, you had your hand. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
How did you hear about us? Uh, the internet, I guess. The internet, uh, YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, welcome. What's your um, first name? Tarek. What? Tarek. Okay. So um, I missed a bit of the conversation earlier, but just to my two cents on what people are talking about, I feel like there's two things side by side. One is cultural, like in terms of culture and how do we get to people and present our values or whatever it is. Yeah. And the, then the other side that nobody sort of talked about and why I picked up the mic is politics, right? In the sense that this is a country of rules, right? And whatever it is that people are complaining about is done through the rules in a sense of, for example, if your school board is teaching your kids about sex education or whatever, it's something that you're not, you're not happy about. That was done through the rules in the sense that it was yeah. implemented in the local council, and then these guys then implement the rules. And in a sense that that's where the fight is, I think, more than culture is that who writes the rules. And yeah, that's where these sure. guys are fighting at in terms of like, you know, if you're looking at the school board, uh, you know, at every level, the state level, the, you know, at Congress level, whatever it is, that's where the fight is. When the rules that are written in America, too, yeah, the rules right. get implemented. And the rules are the rules. So, because I remember when sense, um, what the lady was talking about in terms of organizing and actually trying to get involved and nominate people to write the rules at the state level, at the legislature, at the government level. That's what we have to live by in America. Whatever the law is in California today, we have to live by it. And if you give that up and you see other people are writing the rules, but people are sitting outside and complaining about the effects of the rules, you're basically isolated. You, you know, you, we should be in that space. So that's where the fight is. That's right. To add to that, folks, what we got to do, and I realized this yesterday, because when that thing happened with me, I, and I thought to myself, I wonder why I don't care. I'm not, and when I realized I don't, I'm, I'm not afraid of losing anything. They can take my home, they can take my job, they can take my car, they can take everything. I love what's right more than I love anything else. And so, and when you love what's right more than you love anything else, you're not subject to the world. And, and because if you notice, most people are afraid. The reason they don't speak up is they're afraid of losing something. Just think about it in your own life. You're afraid. If husband and wife don't speak up because they're afraid of losing one another or something. Uh, men who are having sex out of wedlock don't speak up to women because they're afraid of losing their sex. They think, well, if I say something, she will make me sleep on the couch. And so they, they won't speak up because they're afraid of losing. They really are. Just think in your own life, what are you afraid of losing? Because if you are children of God, there should not be anything of this world that's so valuable to you that you would not stand up at the risk of losing it all. Because God is with you. Christ lost it all for us. Everything. He was, he was in the world, but he's not of it. And somewhere down the road, my mind has been renewed, and I don't care what they take from me. I'm going to fight. I, I agree a lot with what we're saying here. I'm going to fight back. I'm going to do what I tell you. I'm going to do what they do, stand up. But I'm not afraid of losing anything. And when you're not afraid of losing anything, you can speak up there. You can represent good. And so I want to urge all of you, you got to overcome the world by not allowing anything to be that important to you that you're afraid to speak up. Because if God is with you, he's going to give that back to you even more so. And you still have peace. You have love. You have courage. His courage is greater than the courage in the world. But you, you must overcome that anger, come out of that fallen state, and be born again. So you can have nothing but, and that was a good question. What was I thinking when I was being attacked? And then pouring that drink on that girl back. Nothing. It felt like fun. <laughs> really. It's, and because when you don't get angry, you're real aware of what's happening. It's when you get angry, you go unconscious, and then you do crazy things in response to what's happening. But if you don't have anger, that's the best way to win the war, is to see the war as you're in it. And, and so I want you to know his world, you can go come here with mine. His world is that of logic, not emotions. The world has fed us emotions, and they lied to us. And another thing, too, you got to start, well, once you overcome the anger, it's going to happen anyway. You got to start living right. Don't do what the world said do. You got to get stop sleeping together before marriage and living together. And men moving into women places and their houses, apartment. And men riding on the woman's side in the car instead of the man's side. You got to start. If you have faith to be right, 
You got to invest. It'll come together for you. You got to live right. You got to be right. It is so amazing. And your mind will be renewed from that of the Father's state to that of God. And then you can stand up. For men and women can stand up. That's what we got to do. They corrupted us first. Those young kids out there yesterday are so corrupt, they don't even know that anything else exists. They are morally bankrupt. And they are convinced that wrong is right and right is wrong. They're going to have hell to pay in their lives as they get older. Because if you're going down that path of, with no values, you, own up, you only end up in destruction. It's amazing. I wrote this article about the uh, five or six women who were nominated to the Congress from the Democratic Party, and all five of them are all corrupt. You got lesbian, Muslims, uh, uh, one woman married a man that had a child already, one woman lived with a boyfriend, the one out of New York, lived with a boyfriend. They like promoted it like it's good, right? And when I wrote this article, so many of my friends turned against me. So-called friends, Christian conservative friends, and turned against me. And the reason is, they told me they were doing that. They lived with their girlfriend before marriage. I said, well, no wonder. When you're wrong, unless you're ready to change, you don't want to hear about right. What's right? So I wanted to tell you this. Don't expect the world to stand with you when you take a stand. I know that the children of the lie, they stand together. They don't even agree on everything, but they stand together. But the children of the truth don't stand together when something goes wrong. You do not stand together because you're afraid of losing something. Well, if, I be see, if I'm seeing with this person, they may take my whatever. How many of you are afraid of losing something if you stood up? Yeah, see there? that? But if you allow God to renew your mind, your relationship with him, you have faith in him, and you know he'll take care of you, that would disappear. Don't try to make that disappear. It'll disappear on its own. That's why you have to always seek the kingdom of God in his right way, and everything will be added. It's so perfect. Then you will no longer be afraid to stand up and disagree, no matter who it is. Yes, ma'am. Jesse, uh, going back to, um, I'm not afraid of losing something. I'm afraid of my well-being. Like, for example, I want to wear a Make America Great Again hat, and I really want to do that. And I can't because I'm afraid that if I walk down the street wearing it, they're going to come and hit me. Like, I, I could get attacked by someone well, are, physically. They should take an action against it. Put them in jail. Do something. And then stop. As someone said, hit them where it hurts. But what if they knock me out and then they disappear and I don't even have a chance to call 911 <laughs> or, or get them arrested? Well, then make sure you're conscious enough to see who is around you. Be aware, and you will be aware of it. Okay. But so do you encourage that? Do you encourage us to like wear America Great Again hats or, or show our faith in, in what we believe in on our sleeves so they can see it? I encourage you to stand up. You've got to stand up. But so not, they can promote, see it. not promote what we believe. If you want a, the hat, wear the hat. They can't tell you what to wear. They wear all kinds of hats that they want to wear. They had on P hats yesterday. I'm like, why do you have this hat on? And they explain why they had it. I can't say it because the kids are here. But they wear those hats. They wear whatever they want. There was an a older woman there with a big gown thing on it. She had the, the P thing drawn on her gown. I'm like, what's the purpose of doing this? They're all proud of it. They don't care what we think. Why do you give in to them telling you what you can and cannot wear? Because they're crazy. But that don't mean you have to take it, though. If they act crazy on you, there are things you can do to take action against them. We don't fight back. That's the problem. We're afraid of intimidation. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wear my, I have this Trump shirt that I wear to, I don't have it on now, but I wear it to the bank or anywhere, post office. And so I, I told you the story. I was at the post office the other day. And a black woman was waiting, servicing me. And she saw the big Trump thing right there. And she like, looked at it. And then she looked back. And then she looked at it again. I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, what kind of shirt is that? <laughs> and she's like, oh, I'm not going to say anything. I ain't going to say nothing. But what kind of shirt is that? I ain't going to say nothing. 
I said, this is a great white hope. <laughs> Don't you like him? No, I hate him. But she didn't say anything. Because I showed no fear. I have no fear. Children of God should not have fear. Perfect love casts out fear. So I'm encouraging you to overcome the anger, come out of that fallen state, stay with the prayer, speak up, and he will renew your mind. He will take away all your fears, and you would know that he will provide for you. You automatically know that, and then you have the courage to wear and do whatever you want. And they can't stop you. That's for sure. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. So you, make sure you get over the fear. They know we are afraid of them. That's why they're carrying on this way. They know that. They know men are afraid to speak up. Women know they can walk up to a man and smack him. He don't do nothing. He's not going to do anything because he's afraid of going to jail or whatever. You got to get over the fear, folks. Yes, uh, Mark. That makes sense? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a really interesting point to not have fear and how powerful the truth is like that. Like to what Joel was saying, he was saying, you know, if you talk to uh, a leftist, we'll say, about whatever, abortion, immigration, it's kind of like talking to a drunk person. You know, there's no point, which is true on its face, but at the same time, you have the truth on your side. Yes. So if you present your side of the argument with no anger, it will like plant a seed in them. They're not going to be like, okay, yeah, you're right. I came here and I'm going to take off my hat or, you know, they're probably not going to do that, but it will stay with them because the truth is on our side. Yeah. So it when really you present is. it... You knew your mind. That's what's so weird about it. Yeah. When you present it dispassionately, yeah. it's very powerful. Yeah. You know, um, a, a regular argument for the wall uh, against abortion, etc. It's extremely powerful when, when you're just like that. When you're arguing back and forth and calling each other names, it all gets... A waste of time. Yeah. It all gets kind of lost. But yeah. if you're just like there, like what you're saying, you, have, you don't have fear. I'm not afraid of being hit. It's like, look, this is what's going on. That can like pierce through all the hats and all the noise and all the yeah. other stuff and really re renew people. But if you start, if they hit you... There's so many things you can do to get back at them. You can sue them. You can take pictures of them. You can do so many things, and then they'll stop. But if you're not going to do anything, you're encouraging them to get worse. It's like being in a relationship. And if the husband or the wife are fighting and you don't stand up for yourself, the one that's doing the fighting is going to get worse. They're not going to stop fighting you just because you. It's like Travis said about the candy bar. We go to jail, if somebody in jail offer you a candy bar and you look at it or take it, they own you. So they're owning you right now. And they have no respect, no nothing. They're just nasty, mean, evil human beings. 